what do you need to think about? Um, like I said, it all goes back to target yield. What, are, what is the target yield that I'm looking for? What is the amount of uh, fertilizer that I'm going to need? And then secondly, look at your, your system of how you can apply it. Would it make sense to put it down pre-seed um, and, and, and band it or broadcast it prior to seeding? Or am I gonna look at, um, at a top dressing situation? Um, again, it's another pass across the field. It's going to be extra work. So will that fit into the logistics of, of your cropping program? Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Deborah Murphy here, we're at Canola Palooza and we're joined by Jack Payne. We're standing in front of a nitrogen demonstration. Now a lot of people this year might have thought a drought was coming and didn't put as much fertilizer down as they would have wanted to know yep. now that it's raining. Exactly. <laughs> what, what can they do? Well, it, it, Deborah, I guess it's part of the uh, staging uh, issue. You have to get your nitrogen down pre-bolting. And so if we look at actually the plot behind me, if this was a situation where you said you didn't have enough nitrogen uh, that you'd put down at seeding, uh, you might be going like, okay, can I, can I do a rescue treatment? But this crop now is already, you know, getting into the 10%, 20% bloom. Uh, it's too late. You've, you've missed the boat to top dress any nitrogen on this. So when you're looking at top dressing, you got to make that decision fairly soon. And that's usually prior to the bolting stage of, of canola. Yeah. And that would probably work out to about the same time that you might put on your second application of herbicide. So if you're looking at putting down your second application of herbicide, then you'd want to maybe be putting on some top dressing of nitrogen. Yeah. And how do we know if it's worth it? Like how much how much do we have to put down in order for it to be worth that extra pass, basically? Well, it, to know how much we need, it, first of all, is knowing what was in your soil. So what was, it, what was your soil test uh, levels? Secondly, is how much did you put down um, at seeding? And then you're looking at your target yield. And, and when it comes to basing fertilizer decisions, we're always looking at target yield as, as, as where we want to be. So, you know, going with nitrogen use, basically around... Uh, uh, 2.8 to 3 pounds of nitrogen per bushel of yield. Uh, you can work back as to how much nitrogen you think you need to apply uh, to that crop. I guess I just want to make one other comment too about going back to the staging thing. When we top dress, especially if we're using, whether we're top dressing a liquid or a granular product, you got to realize uh, the day that you apply that fertilizer, it's not going to be immediately taken up by the plant. Uh, generally, you're looking at 10 days to two weeks, probably by the time the fertilizer uh, is dissolved gets through the soil and then is taken up into the roots of the plant. So you've got to put it on well in advance to be able to uh, you know, meet the nutritional needs of the crop. And typically when we're looking at canola, we're looking at the, uh, the biggest uptake of nitrogen is typically in that first six to eight weeks of development because that's when it's really building the yield and the yield potential. So if a plant is deficient in nitrogen uh, early on, it will be reflected in lower yield down the road. To bring the, actually for the point of this demonstration, is why was the top dressing done? It boils down to our target yields, uh, Deborah. When we look at 20 years ago, uh, we were building fertilizer recommendations for a crop that was targeting 45, 40 bushels of canola. Now, yield expectations are 65 to 70 bushels of canola per acre. And so when we look at that, if we, if we look at a 70 bushel crop of uh, canola, it's gonna require 200 pounds plus of nitrogen to, to meet that yield. So let's use an example. Let's say that uh, we do a soil test and we, and we have mineralized nitrogen and, and nitrogen already in the soil. Let's say there's 70 pounds of nitrogen in the ground. Well, that's not too bad. But if we want to grow a, two, a 70 bushel crop, we're looking at needing over 200 pounds of nitrogen, which means we have to add another 150 or so pounds of nitrogen to the soil to meet that target. Well, if we're using urea, which is 46%, that means we have to apply over 300 pounds of actual fertilizer urea, which is a lot of fertilizer. So when we look back in the uh, 1980s and 1990s when we started direct seeding, when our target yields were 35 and 40 bushels of canola, we could do it with one pass. We could put enough fertilizer and seed down where we could do it with one pass of seeding. But now we're running into, if we're trying to shoot for these higher yields of 70, 75 bushels of canola, uh, we're running into some physical limitations that we can't put all that fertilizer product 
through the air seeder? Well, we could, but we'd end up with, uh, with just logistics problems of being able to seed that crop. So now in some situations where we have, let's say, a deficient soil and we have to put on some really high rates of nitrogen, for example, like in this trial, you know, we're putting down 200 kilograms per hectare, which works out to about 100 and close to 180 pounds or 185 pounds of nitrogen per acre. That's a lot of fertilizer to put uh, through the air seeder. So in these situations where you have to apply high rates, we might be going back now into looking at split applications or two applications of our nitrogen. So in this particular trial, uh, half of the nitrogen was side banded, uh, applied at seeding, and the other half was top dressed. Uh, the other option is to look at perhaps uh, broadcasting or pre-banding the nitrogen prior to seeding. So in some cases where we have to put on these very, very high rates of nitrogen, we might be looking at two split applications. So we have to sometimes think outside of the traditional one-pass system.